Duck and cover. Hello and welcome to Surviving Classical Music. I'm Andrew Byrne. Today is a very special episode. Joining me is early music specialist, flute player, and one half of Phosphines, the duo that's writing about uh, musicians at the moment. They're also publishing, they're publishing both on their own channels, but also on the Surviving Classical Music website. This is Johanna Bartz. Welcome. Hi, Andrew. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Don't speak directly into Lie. the microphone. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so what we're going to do today is that from what we understand... And we're we're pretty sure it would happened on Saturday, the fourteenth of August, but it could be a, a day or two before that. Or uh, in any case, this thing is blowing up in German speaking lands right now, especially Austria, because it was it happened in Austria. But this is a moment where, in the middle of a festival, which we'll get into in a second, the it it comes out that the orchestra members who are playing in this event are getting paid close to nothing. And there's a fight, which we will witness, that happens in public about the fee of the musicians. And then uh, it comes out, the, the, the person in charge admits that the orchestra is paid next to nothing. And let's go through it. Uh, first of all, Johanna, um, what I would like for you to do for those English listeners, of course, everybody, this podcast is, is in English, um, and there is no yet a good resource to watch this in English. If you could just give us a quick description, we'll watch three sections of this video, um, which isn't super long. And if you could just give us a quick summary of, of what happens at, at the end of every section. So can you first give us the names of the, the, the two people who are, who are in this video? Yeah, sure. So the person who actually calls this thing out that the musicians are paid close to nothing is Alexander Köck. And he's a musician of uh, the Austrian-based band Kari Kari. And this band is performing there in this event as well. And next to them is an orchestra of uh, young musicians sitting and the host of the evening with whom he gets into a fight is Alphonse Haider. So he's an Austrian entertainer, host, actor, I believe. Yeah. Right. So he's he's from the stage. He's not necessarily a performing orchestral musician. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. And what we under, what I understand is that he's not only the moderator, like the gut, what they call moderator, the MC of the night. He's also actually an artistic director of the festival of some kind. Exactly. So this event we are going or the excerpt of the event we are going to witness is an opening uh, celebration for an exhibition to celebrate 100 years of the state of Burgenland in Austria. And um, there's a gigantic music festival, the Burgenland uh, Music Festival, I believe. And Alphonse Haider is the general intendant, so the artistic director right. of this festival. Okay, let's go straight into it, shall we? Sure. Und wir freuen uns wirklich sehr, dass wir heute bei diesem historischen Ereignis dabei sein können, von weil ich nicht ganz sicher bin, ob wir quasi bei der 200 Jahre Feier noch fit genug sind für die Bühne. Aber ja, in jedem Fall ist es wirklich ein sehr schöner Anlass und möchte mich bei allen bedanken. Aber ich möchte auch trotzdem was sagen. Ich habe nämlich vorhin mit vielen Musikern geredet, die heute auch spielen und auch im Orchester. Und es ist mir so ein bisschen ein Herzenanliegen, dass ich was dazu sage, weil ich habe mitbekommen, dass die Damen und Herren da drüben im Orchester, die bekommen heute gleich 30 Euro pro Abend fürs Spielen. Und das finde ich in einem Kulturland, Burgenland, bei 100 Jahre Burgenland, bei einem sozialdemokratischen Land, finde ich das beschämend. Und ich finde es besonders beschämend nach Corona. Und ich finde es noch beschämender, wenn man gleichzeitig weiß, dass in Corona genug Geld dafür da ist, dass es zwei Intendanten bei der Seefischspiel Mörbisch gibt. Und das... Ja. Und ich finde, da geht es ein bisschen um, äh, um Anerkennung und wir alle auch da... Es sind halt wirklich Weltstars da, also der Christian Kolonovic, es ist so eine Ehre, da zu spielen, Opus, Brui und, und alle sind total unterbezahlt und spielen für ein sprichwörtliches Butterbrot, weil es alle wir stolze Burgenländer sind und wir wollen Teil davon sein, dass wir das Burgenland repräsentieren. Und ich, wir haben eigentlich wollten absagen, aber der Christian Kolonovic hat zu mir gesagt, na dann sag halt was. <lacht> und deswegen sind wir heute da und 
Ich wollte nur sagen, als, nur als Referenzrahmen, wir haben, einen, wir haben eine Tournee gespielt in Albanien und wir haben in Albanien mehr Gage bekommen als heute. Wir haben letztes Jahr in Vorarlberg gespielt, wo wir überhaupt keinen Bezug haben und haben die zehnfache Gage bekommen von dem, was wir heute angebotet haben. Und das ist aber kein Problem, weil wir machen sehr gern fürs Burgenland. Aber wie ich dann das gehört habe von den 30 Euro, da habe ich mir echt gedacht, es liegt mir so am Herzen und es tut mir auch leid, wenn ich jetzt so ein bisschen den Rahmen unterbreche, aber... Ich wollte es einfach gesagt haben, einfach, dass das ein bisschen einen Kontext gibt. Und ich glaube, wenn wir in Kulturland Burgenland sind, dann finde ich, sollte man das auch die Künstler würdigen. Und da geht es gar nicht um mit Kulturförderung, so weit gehe ich gar nicht, sondern da geht es darum, dass man das zahlt, was jeder Kulturverein, jeder Veranstalter in Albanien ohne Förderung auch bezahlt. Und, ja, und dann quasi... Entschuldigung, Entschuldigung, bitte. Right, so, so I know that he, he kind of goes off in the middle there for a second, but can you give us the, the two major points that uh, he gives us. Yes, so first he, he's always very friendly as you could see and first he's like thanking the organizers that they can perform there and he mentions that very famous musicians and performers from that specific area are playing there and he found out that the musicians of the orchestra only get 30 euros per evening per musician and um, he says that he finds it really a shame that especially in times of corona and especially especially that for for the fact that Burgenland is a very like they call themselves a very cultural or cultural culture loving people or area and he says that it's it's really a shame that people the people there get paid like this and that they have been talking among each other with with the other musicians like what can we do should we say something should we cancel mm -hmm. as if i understand him right he says um we even they even considered to cancel and then one of the the other performers who's quite famous says well say something in public mm -hmm. so this is what happens until there he goes off in the middle and he he says says or he explains that they've been playing in other regions in albania in also in another region of austria and they they always got paid much more than this mm -hmm. and there should be an understanding of a decent payment and that it cannot be that such a um, such a renowned organizer like the Burgenland Festspiele or the Festspiele Mörbisch in that case pays so little um, and pays less than every small association or fine or right, like little right. organizer. So he's pointing out that this is actually a, this is a serious music festival and and they're paying so little even less than very very tiny yes, music festivals. Yes, exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. so now at this point, we've just stopped where the artistic director interrupts yes. uh, Alexander Kirk. So, can we continue? Mit allem Respekt. Sie haben eine falsche Information. Jeder Musiker in Mörbisch bekommt 140 Euro pro Abend. Nicht in Mörbisch, heute. heute. Ich habe verstanden Mörbisch. Nein, nein, nein. Hat nichts mit Mörbisch zu tun. Okay. Tut mir leid. Aber ich glaube auch, dass diese Zahl nicht stimmt. Oh ja, also ich habe es gefragt vorher, also das ist, ich habe es überprüft. Aber es ist wurscht, ich will jetzt auch quasi, ich will jetzt niemanden den Abend... Das ist nicht wurscht. Sie machen, hier Vor halt. Sie machen hier Vorwürfe, die sicher auch andere Gründe haben. Nein, überhaupt Vielleicht nicht. Vielleicht sind diese Gagen auch aufgeteilt äh, auf die Bands und die entscheiden dann, wie es weitergeht. Bitte? Sie bekommen 30 Euro pro Abend? Nein, nein, aber wir... Hier? Ich, hab, ich wollte jetzt quasi stellvertretend sprechen für alle Musiker, die heute da sind. Und ich glaub, das ist, ich Aber wissen Sie, Sie stellen dann ein System hin und sagen, als Verbrecher, wir haben zwei Intendanten. Nein. Wir haben nicht zwei Intendanten, wir haben einen künstlerischen Leiter und einen Intendanten. Und das ist ein Unterschied für drei Festivals. Ich möchte schon, dass man auch wirklich anerkennt, dass auch andere Menschen arbeiten. Und ich ja. bin von der Bühne und ich weiß auch, was wir jetzt gerade erleben auf der Bühne, mit Unterstellungen. Und ich bitte Sie, vorsichtig zu sein, weil es die oben sind immer die Verbrecher. Nein, und das, das ist aber nicht so, mein Lieber. Es muss man mir laut sagen, es tut mir leid. Gut. Es tut mir leid, wenn Sie sich persönlich angegriffen fühlen. Ich, ich wollte nur etwas dazu sagen. Ich bin nicht persönlich angegriffen. Ja. Gut. Überhaupt nicht. Gut. Aber man muss ja auch wirklich die andere Seite hören. Na, ich sehe die andere Seite genauso. Und ich, ich sehe das, deswegen heißt gesagt, ich würde mir wünschen, dass es ein Gespräch dazu gibt, dass man miteinander redet. Ja, aber nicht bei so einer Show, wo alles emotional ist, sind Sie bitte nicht böse. Okay, so there's a lot that happens there, but the first thing that I get is that uh, this guy, Alphonse Heider, who walks on in the, in, with the white jacket, he says, first of all, in the Mürbisch festival, 
all the musicians are paid 140 euros per night. Exactly. You have the wrong information. Exactly. And Alexander Kirk says, no, not that festival tonight. I'm talking about tonight. Yes. So they, they kind of get into a little argument like which festival exactly is, uh, like which they consider the, the organizer or the festival. So, but it doesn't, it's, it's not the point there, obviously. The point is something else. And you can see that uh, Haider is like emotionally really... Uh, He feels attacked. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why he walks in and he corrects uh, Alexander. And um, it's interesting because he even, he almost like tells him off. He tells him like, don't say this in a show like this. Don't say this in public at a show like this. How, how can you do this? Yeah. And I'm a stage person. I'm an entertainer. I know... Um, I know all the sites and, and I think it's a good idea to have a talk, but not in, within this show. And it's not fair that you depict the organizers of this festival, like the people who sit on top, uh, you depict them as like uh, criminals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And But you, we can hear it in his voice. Like he's like, how dare you? You know, he, he's almost shaking at one point when he turns back to the crowd Yes. For a second, he's yes. he's actually yes. like he. You can hear the nerves in his body, yeah. and he's like, "You're Absolutely. wrong," and and how dare you accuse us? Yeah. And then just before, like when we just heard um, Alexander Cook speaking, he he criticized that there's enough money for two intendanten, mm -hmm. meaning two artistic directors or two directors of the festival. Right. And Haider corrects him and says, well, it's a difference to have one intendant and one künstlerischer director or something like this. So he differentiates the two positions, positions and then he tries to justify um, more that there's like, actually it's not one festival, but like three sub festivals or something like that. Uh -huh. So he goes into, he does one of these things where he, he parries the accusation by saying, well, things are more complicated than you think. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So he, he kind of patronizes, uh, the singer's understanding of, of how this organization works. And right. his main point is like, how can you, first of all, how can you say this in a show like this? You have wrong information yeah. and you are, you are saying that we are all criminals, which is not okay. Right. Let's do the last section. Vielleicht kann ich jetzt, äh, liebe Kare Kare, für ein bisschen Aufklärung sorgen, wenn Sie das noch hören wollen. Die jungen Musiker, die hier sitzen, sind aus den verschiedenen Konservatorien, die gesponsert sind vom Land und bekommen für solche Auftritte, ich erinnere mich auch, wie ich im Konservatorium war, entweder 30 Euro Reise und auch Verpflegung. Das sind also nicht abgeschlossene Musiker, sondern das Studenten und Studentinnen. Nein, sie machen jetzt so und stellen hier wirklich alle hin als Leichtverbrecher. Es tut mir leid, das kann man nicht akzeptieren. Nein, weil morgen steht in der Zeitung, Burgenland zahlt nur 30 Euro pro Abend. Und das tut mir leid. Es tut mir auch leid, meine jungen Damen und Herren vom Konservatorium, dass sie nur 30 Euro bekommen. Aber das hätte Christian auch wissen müssen. Und äh, das sind bitte keine jetzt Profimusiker. Und ich hoffe, dass Sie sich nicht ausgenutzt fühlen von uns. <lacht> fühlen Sie sich ausgenutzt von uns? Ja? Sie fühlen sich trotzdem als Musiker. Dankeschön. Ja. Okay. Man sollte auch bei solchen Dingen offen drüber reden. Ich hoffe, das hat Sie nicht gestört. Es ist, muss, einem, muss einem eigentlich auch wurscht sein, weil ich erlebe selbst im Augenblick Situationen, wo einfach nur hingeschlagen wird auf jemanden, und man keine Gelegenheit bekommt, sich zu verteidigen. Yes, so now when <laughs> the musicians performed again, like after that, Haider uh, goes on stage again and he says, um, I have to confirm that the musicians only get 30 euros for this evening, but uh, we are not considering one important point. They are all students of the Landeskonservatorium, so of the music academies of that state, of Burgenland. 
Um, and basically indicating like we pay for their education yes. and they are not professional musicians yet. So that's yeah. the justification. That they're, not, uh, they're not finished in their studies they're not finished, and therefore, so I'm sorry, these are not professionals. Exactly. Right. And um, he, he even apologize, uh, apologizes in the same moment, like he turns around to the orchestra and says, I'm really sorry that you only get 30 euros, but that's how it is. And then he kind of goes into a moment of self-pity where he says you know at the moment it's the situation that people just bash on on into situations when when they think like there's injustice going on and they they just don't differentiate and and um, you have no we have no um, opportunity to to justify our ways of actions at all and people are just blaming us and tomorrow it's written in the newspaper that Burgenland only pays 30 euros mm. uh, per evening and um yeah, but his main argument is these musicians you see here on stage are not professional musicians yet. And then he even turns again to the orchestra and asks, so do you have a problem with that? Do you feel um, mistreated by us or do you think we take advantage of you? Mm -hmm. And there's this one cello player who turns around and says something. Yeah. And by the response of Haida, you can, um, uh, we know that probably he said something, well, we are professional musicians. Yeah. Um, we feel like we are professional musicians. Yeah, and that's what he says. He yeah. says you feel like you seem to feel like you are a professional musician, yes, right? Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. is yeah. But then he's he just brushes that off and continues. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think there are a couple of things which I mean I won't we won't play again, but a couple of things that surprised uh, like four things which really surprised me. One is that. Alexander Kirk finishes speaking and for just a second we see the cameras pan towards the audience and you hear obviously we hear clapping when he speaks but when we look at the audience for just that brief second not that many people are clapping there's a lot of people there with their arms crossed just exactly. staring at him staring I mean you can see that they are stunned and perplexed and it's in an extremely awkward moment yeah. you see the people like smiling out of insecurity and some people have like their faces turned to stone. Yeah, they have their arms crossed and yeah. they are not clapping. Right. Mm. And then we have another another thing that I want to note is that when Haider comes on the first time and and the, the basically the debate is over and it's just, just before he says, okay, we're going to keep playing and, and they start playing the music. Just before that, when Haider is just like, I'm, you know, this is it and don't accuse us of being criminals and whatever. And then he, he's about to walk off. People start clapping for him. Yes. Right. And uh, and then when we have finally in the third section where Haider turns to the orchestra and says like sorry but you're not professionals basically I find it funny that the musicians don't do anything they're kind of stunned at the yeah. whole thing and then the next sequence literally where we just stopped they've clearly played on in the concert they've clearly and played well yes. as well what we hear yes it just boggles my mind also that nobody seems to have left or booed you know, at the situation. It's just everybody is just stunned. Nobody knows what to do. Yeah. And yeah, the obvious reaction would be like, yeah, to boo or to say something or musicians walking off stage or something like that. Yeah. Nothing like that happens. Yeah. Nothing even close to that. No, nothing from the audience, nothing from the orchestra. Yeah. And... It's it's irritating from so many points <laughs> of views, like from the audience. I, well, you can see that they really don't know. Like part of them doesn't know what to how to react, what's going on. They are just like stunned and 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 well. And from the musicians' point of view, I can understand somehow. I mean, they are super young, and I remember when I was a student, mm -hmm. I paid a couple of gigs that were like not only a couple. I paid a lot of gigs that were so badly paid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there was simply no understanding of this. And the understanding would have been like, uh, be happy that you can collect some professional experience. Yes. Be grateful for that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, in a way, like these, they are all students still and they are, they are dependent. They are dependent of their teachers, of the whole uh, music academy system, how they are going to be graded. And I think you can clearly see there this kind of 
attitude that's so implanted into all of our brains that we just have to to sit it out, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I find it interesting that the well, I, I, what I what I am almost sure about, but of course I have no idea, is that these kids, when they kids, these musicians, when they were given the contract or the onfraga or whatever, when they were asked to perform and they were told it's thirty euros, and the trip and the food, right? Yeah. Those were the three things that he said they were paid for mm -hmm. or they were given for this. I'm sure it didn't say this is coming out. Uh, this is your duty because the state has sponsored your education, right? Which is how he uses to justify the fact that uh, they don't owe them very much because yes. he says these are from state-sponsored schools, conservatories, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. As if, as you said, as if they are like we have already paid out of our taxes yeah. for this performance. Exactly. Basically. So they uh, actually later in the section that comes up now, he he says it again. He says like the state is paying for for their education, so it's justified. Right. And he really points that out, and. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure. Like nobody said that to the yeah. musicians when they yeah. were hired, and the moment yeah, they yeah. were hired, like it's your you duty. owe us exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to two things. Uh, so we have two news articles: one in Der Standard, and not article, editorial. Excuse me. And then there's another one in the Courier, right? Yes. So we just discovered that uh, an article in the Courier, or like it was in several newspapers, but just like five hours. Uh, before this this podcast, this video is recorded, Haider um, publicly apologized on Facebook. And uh, of course he had to. And yeah, I mean, the video is blowing up. It's like yes. 80, 85,000 views <laughs> yes. in the music classical music world of Austria. Yes. Yeah. And I, in, in all the um, Austrian newspapers who, who wrote about this, you can see like in the commentary sections, like the, the, the it just blows up. Like there are yeah. so many people talking about that. And the interesting part about his apology is that he says he he is a part of the system and he always tried within his own uh, possibilities to balance the inequalities of the system, to balance it out. Uh -huh. But he, so he, he speaks very vaguely about yeah. balancing things, even though he just admitted he was part of a festival that was giving people 30 euros a day. Exactly, a day. And, and he admitted that he, he knew all the time that, of course, his system lives from on on the back of... Oh, that, well, that's not what he says, but he says like he knew all the years and he's aware since a very long time that this system is injustice and... No, it's unjust. Unjust, yes. <laughs> that this system is unjust and... Um, he always tried to act in a balancing way, right? Within the possibilities, right? But it's a completely vague. Uh, well, I mean, it's a thing. The thing is, it's very hard for someone to apologize. It, you know, you can apologize for your behavior. You know, if he came out there and it wasn't as bad as it as it was, and the musicians were paid 100 euros a day or, or 150 euros or 300 euros. It doesn't really matter. The number mm -hmm. doesn't matter. But if he came out there and he just came out in front of Alexander Kirk and went, you dick, you know, mm. and was really nasty to him, actually, and said a lot of nasty things, then when he makes an apology afterwards, he says, I'm, I, I can apologize for my behavior. And then we can accept the apology. But when in this, he says, I apologize for the fact that the musicians were paid almost nothing. And I do my best to make sure that doesn't happen. But no. He actually, well, he actually even, he doesn't even say that. He says, I'm very sorry if the musicians felt offended. Ah, okay. So the typical. Yeah, I apologize if you're offended. Exactly. Right, yeah. right, right. And, uh, and they will meet in the beginning of the new right. school year for talks and they will talk right. everything out. And I'm sure they will. They hope they can find a solution. So <laughs> I don't know what to say. You know, we, we surviving classical music. We we shared this five minutes after you sent it to me. You know, what's funny is that it came it came only a few minutes after I said we we're taking a break this week, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh no, <laughs> now we have <laughs> red alert. <laughs>
somebody from Austria posted, and I'm I'll just like put it up on the screen now. And she basically showed all of the different offers that I'm pretty sure she had received, if not ones that her friends or colleagues have received. And it's actually ridiculous when you look at actually what the professional fee is in Austria in in certain moments for freelance mm. musicians. Mm. It's it's what you would say is unsustainable. You know, yes. you you can't continue living on sut on 50 euros a day. You know, you 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 can't do that if mm -hmm. you're living maybe if you live in a tiny town with no cell phone reception and no internet connection. You know like where you have very little actual expenses? Yes. Um or but let's say like 30 years ago like in 1990 and the prices just never changed but the inflation Exactly. Well, did change a lot. And, exactly. Yeah. So I and it's not even you know in some cases it's not that inflation has gone up it's just that things cost more. Yes. You know, mm. so especially housing is so much more expensive mm -hmm. than it used to be. Mm. I I just don't know. You know, there's this thing if you're living in Switzerland right now. There's the um, the festival in Luzern, the Luzern festival. So they have this, and there's some kind of campaign going on, which is called Music for Future or Sustainability in Music. And Switzerland is a different country than Austria when it comes to music, mm -hmm. classical music performance, absolutely, for sure. But I'm I'm looking at the situation in Switzerland, and Switzerland. I'm looking, and I'm asking the question, like, what do, what is sustainability, you know? And, but for sure, the, what we just witnessed, where the orchestra basically, you know, like the, the intendant, said, well, yeah, we're paying them nothing, but we're paying them the travel and we're paying them for, we're giving them a meal. Mm -hmm. And well, we're all paying for their education. So they should be, and they agreed to it. So what's the yeah. problem? That to me looks like there's going to be nothing left, you know, in a exactly. couple of years. Why, how can you support yourself yeah. on 30 euros a day? It's completely ridiculous. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> and what is interesting also in this event actually is that apparently the other artists um, get quite little fees as well, but they are really established artists. Right. And there was this one editorial that we, we found online from Der Standard that was really irritating. And I thought, maybe I'm just missing something. I can't read in between the lines, you know, and mm -hmm. understand the irony of it or the sarcasm. And the, the writer basically says, well, it's such an honor to to make music on the same stage with this and that famous musician. Um, and that's like a, like a glorious hour in, in, <laughs> in your musician's life. So why ask any money for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And surely none of the young musicians... Uh, like surely all of them would have played even for free, yeah. Um, just knowing that they will be sharing the same stage with um, famous person, mm -hmm. so and so, and yeah, that's that's just really. It's funny because there's too. clearly both in that editorial, but also when Hyder says we're sponsoring, like the schools are sponsored by the state. There's this there's this sort of tacit understanding that if you're studying music, it's really to to be in your amateur choir, you know, like that this yeah. is an amateur pursuit and these people are successful. We don't know how, you know, but regardless of whether they came through a state school or whatever, but it was some other force that made them famous. Exactly, yeah. And, um, and actually these people are all simply going to be amateurs. And, and so they should be thankful to be playing next to these people because this will be a nice memory for them when they're working as a fireman and playing in the fireman's capella or something, you yes. know, like that's, that's the sort of attitude mm. that's coming down from here. And when we listen to them play of that short snippet that we do, it's like, nope, that sounds pretty professional to me. Yes. And yeah, it's interesting because it's like just disregarding this whole, like the whole biography or the whole, the years and years of practice that these musicians have put into even being admitted to to a music academy 
Like they just forget about that. You 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 are basically a sort of professional the moment you enter an academy because you have to to get through an entrance exam mm -hmm. to several ones actually. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean also their uh, the the musical the, the instruments that they they have in their hands. I mean nobody thinks of how many thousands of euros they have spent yeah. just on their equipment on the most basic equipment, not even counting in anything else, like possibly microphones or cases or mm -hmm. a car, if you have a huge instrument that you need to transport on your own. And yes, just acting if it's as if it's any other professional training where you basically start the actual professional training on the first day of education when you're like... 18, 19, 20 years old mm -hmm. and you enter university whereas those people have been practicing and training since they are little children. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting to see also in the comment section as you noted, not only in the YouTube videos but in the articles where the, basically the whole population is against, is for the musicians in this case and mm -hmm. against Haider. Yes. You could see a cup. I found a couple of comments from from persons who said, "Well, if they have such a problem with not being paid enough, they can just take their instrument and play like on the sidewalk in 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 a mall or like in front of a mall and and just collect money in a hat." Yeah. And why are they complaining? That's their own path they choose. Right. I saw that as well. But the the majority of people really um, speaks up against Haida and and like. Um, really congratulates uh, Alexander Kirk for his courage to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that already in this event they they discuss that it was extremely inappropriate of that singer to to call this out. Mm -hmm. And um, now after that people in general say no, that it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see now if... I if we were to get a contract in Austria from now on, I imagine there's going to be a clause that says you can't talk about the conditions of your contract. Could be, yeah. Mm. Um, because of what's what's happened here, especially the lower it goes. I find that the, I've, I've done, I don't do it anymore, but I played for a group which was in France just across the border from here. And the fee was horribly low, not as low as 30 euros a day, but... Mm. 80 euros, I uh, think. The atmosphere was bad. You were treated down, like talked down on and, and so on. And, and of course, I didn't do it again after I played a few, one or two concerts. And um, anyway, in, in any case, I found with that group, compared to all of the other ones, the they put so many different clauses in the contract to beat you down. You know, mm -hmm. you can't talk about it. If you're late 15 minutes, we're going to take money away. If you miss a day, we're going to sue you. Um, all, you know, all of these things which you have to agree on at, at, at the beginning. I, I, you know, like it, this is in that realm, even though I, I have no idea what's in the contract, but mm -hmm. this sort of treatment. Mm -hmm. And then to actually justify the treatment to the public in the middle of the concert yeah. is really just unbelievable. Yes, I mean, the moment, like, it's it's really such an awkward moment. Like, and you can see that when Alexander starts speaking about it, that he's really, he's nervous, but he does it in the most friendly way. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, I mean, you need, you need moments like this. Like, the more awkward and the more not in place, the better it is, I guess, because mm -hmm. otherwise people will never hear like it has to hit people in the face until they understand what's going on yeah. like before we met to uh, make this podcast you said to me like this was like a, a look for the audience behind the curtain yeah and i thought that that just describes it so well that there's this really weird moment where they actually see what's going on and and the, the strange mechanisms that that keep these circumstances alive that just yeah. keep them running like this yeah i find absolutely that that's exactly what i would what it is you know that we not of course that's not our relationship with every music presenter you know mm -hmm. there are really great presenters there there are certain projects which we do because we want to do them and not because we uh are doing it for the money mm -hmm. ne necessarily and also like alexander kirk says that 
Mm. You know, like we, we're not being paid so much like in other places, but we want to do this for Burgenland. Exactly. You, you know, mm. so I, I have done those, you know, I'm sure you have done those as well mm-hmm. and, and come out of it going, ah, oh, well, yeah, whatever. But I really, <laughs> I enjoyed it and I wanted to do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But in this case, this is one of those nightmare scenarios where you you want to raise your voice and you know that there's an authority person there who's ready to beat you down if uh, if the situation is not good. And I know I know like both you and I have told each other stories of that sort of thing happening where we, of course, didn't speak out to the public uh, mm-hmm. in the moment, but that was happening and the public had no idea. Exactly. Um, but That's an interesting point because this is something I have observed that audiences sometimes have really interesting ideas of, of what we earn. Like there are a lot of people who accept uh, or who expect that um, we earn very little. Like we earn like 50 euros or 30 euros per concert and they think, well, that's a lot of money. Or I mean, this typical thing that happens to everybody of us, like... People uh, join you after a concert, uh, they talk to you and they say, so, and what is your actual profession? Um, so we have this extreme, but I also had the other extreme once with a, I had like a, a student in Berlin, like a, a grown up woman, and she was working in the cultural, um, in a cultural department of, of a city or a state, something like that. So she was not completely far away from this whole topic. And she she witnessed a concert where I played like in an orchestra, in a baroque orchestra, like a B minor mass or something in the Berlin Philharmonie. And she asked me, how can I ask how much you earn? And I was like, well, wait, let me think. It was two days of rehearsal and one day of concert. So it was 150 per day, quite regular German yeah. baroque orchestra uh, fee. So it was 450 in total. And she was shocked and she was like, but you played as a soloist, you even had a solo aria, the Benedictus. And I thought you were getting like 5,000 euros for this because you played, <laughs> <laughs> because you played in the Berliner yeah. Philharmonie. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, everybody can rent the Philharmonie and just play there. I mean, anybody. And yeah. um, and I was really surprised that she would have... She, she had would, no idea. She had no idea. And she would think these this are these are the dimensions like yeah, of, yeah. of the fees we, we are used to. Yeah. And I mean I have I've heard that for like solo recitals for early music people in maybe the nineties or the eighties where people would still earn fees like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um but these times are long over and yeah. um, so people some people really don't have any idea and i mean you can't blame them i i don't want to blame them but just mm-hmm. to to point out that um the understanding of of our reality is is just not there or there's yeah. just no no relation to that whatsoever i think the one thing and w- which you know i only really came up with this just before we started but when we when you had discovered that the uh, hider had given his apology i think equal space should be given in the courier to one of the musicians who received the 30 euros, you know, because I mean, what it doesn't, because essentially this is him doing damage control for his own reputation, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I really don't, I don't care. I don't care if he's successful or not successful in the future, whatever, you know, but clearly this, this practice is wrong and it has to stop. And it doesn't like, we don't need to hear, from the person who feels wronged, we need to be heard from the people who were wronged, and yes. that and that was the musicians, yeah, um, not him. So yeah, and it's interesting because they all stay like nameless, faceless, yeah, music students who are to be pitied, and yeah, and as you said, they have no voice in that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, all the attention now goes to the two people who were fighting there or arguing there in public. Um, yeah, and it's it's kind of a weird reality that the person who who really behaved horribly in public gets most of the attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> but anyway, Johanna, thanks very much for joining us for this one and explaining uh, every little detail of this <laughs> video as we went through it. Thank you very much for having me. It was great fun, although the topic, of course, is very sad yes Mm -hmm. yes it is but anyway hopefully something good will come of it and in in any case anybody who's anglophone will be much more 
uh, informed about the situation. Yeah, I hope that. And let's see how the situation develops and yeah. what will come out of this. And yeah, I'm curious to to follow the media and the newspapers, what's going to happen or if anything's going to happen or a discussion is going to start mm -hmm. on that topic. Would be great. Yes, definitely. Um, and maybe it will happen on this channel. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Well, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, this episode of, is, of course, available as an audio podcast. As usual, you can look at through our links below. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, like the video. Thanks very much for watching and take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.